live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to the home of the Stanley Cup champion, Washington Capitals. You're watching theCUBE's exclusive coverage of AWS Public, Summit, Public Sector Summit 2018. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host, John Furrier, and happy to welcome to the program Brett Dennis, who's the head of product development, product management with yeah. Helio Campus. Thank Brett, you. Thanks so much for joining us. Go Caps, thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Absolutely, uh, all excited. O Ovechkin really, you know, bringing that, that joie de vivre of uh, yeah. you know, having won the cup, uh, lots of celebration, and uh, it's a lot of energy here yeah. at this show. So uh, yeah. we're heading into day two. Uh, what, what's your, uh, how have you felt the show so far? It's good, it's been good. Um, I did the, the Ed Start program early in the week and we did a sales pitch competition for startup uh, Ed Techs. So it's been really exciting. So lots of fun things going on. Yeah, we, we love talking to startups here on theCUBE. Uh, I've talked to a number of in, uh, companies. Cybersecurity, it's like, oh okay, wait, which agency did you come out sure. of? It's the NSA and the like. You have a similar story uh, coming out of the University of Maryland. So why right. don't give us a little bit of background on here. Yeah, so we were spun out in 2016 from the University College. Uh, the Maryland Board of Regents had recognized the value that we'd brought to the university uh, over about six years of development in, in terms of the technology platform and the services we were bringing to the university and decided this would be really useful to other universities, so let's spin it out into a company and uh, go to market. And that's what we've been doing for the last two years. So it's been very exciting. Talk about the product. What, do you, what does it do? I mean, obviously you guys incubated it in the college. Yeah. So there's some equity arrangements, so you got a grant. Right. Tell the story about the funding and then now as you expand, How's, what's that plan look like and how does Amazon fit into the whole mix? So we had an uh, initial grant from the, the Board of Regents from the state of Maryland and the idea was to assist colleges and universities to help them ask and answer their most pressing questions but using data. And in order to, in order to effectively do that, we wanted to bring uh, a full solution that included platform, technology, as well as a services approach. So we're using Amazon Web Services and the Redshift data, uh, data, data, database and platform to collect data from universities. And then we have a services team that works with Tableau dashboards to not only help visualize data in meaningful ways, but also to explore how different data sets can be cross-seeded together across the student life cycle. Who's the user for you guys? Obviously, big data analytics is awesome. We're seeing that clearly as a, one of those things where it's completely changing businesses. Sure. And getting these kinds of insights that are actionable and, and different. Sometimes new questions can be answered. Right. Who's the buyer? Who's the user? How is that working? So institutional research is a key stakeholder for us. They are traditionally seen as the data owners of universities and colleges. Do most of the research, do most of the numbers crunching. But our idea is that we want to really democratize access to data to enrollment managers, to admissions managers, even to financial managers that want to have the, their own power to explore and interrogate the data, but do it in such a way that it's a very intuitive process. So they don't have to be SQL query writers or really hardcore database developers. We're trying to get to those functional types of users to give them access so to the data. Business users basically who want to, you don't have to be a data scientist and know Python and wrangle data. Sure. You're thinking about more of like turning them into analysts on the fly. We want them to be able to ask and answer their own questions without needing the technical technical skills. Now that's precisely why we bring the services in. So if they decide, I really want to use a predictive uh, algorithmic approach to forecasting or to admissions modeling, then we have data scientists available to provide that services level on top of the platform. Yeah, wondering if you might be able to give us uh, an example, either generically or if you can mention a specific company, just to sure. help illustrate you know, how, how they're transforming the use of data. So we, we work with uh, the system at the system level for the University of North Carolina. So they had a need where they had done a lot of work on building up base data extracts of their own, but they needed a way to get that data out to campuses in a more effective way and usually using rich visualizations. So uh, we won uh, an RFP with them and we're able to help them not only at the system level but also at the campuses to make sure that the campuses and the Board of Regents and the Board of Governors 
are getting the data that they need to, again, understand what are my patterns and trends for success, uh, what are specific student populations that we want to help, and we want to use data help to help get to those insights. So that's Fred, been a real success story Fred, for us. Talk about the uh, public sector impact of Amazon. Obviously Amazon's well known in the startup community. Sure. You can spin up a server that kind of changed the whole provisioning of a data center. Now they got large enterprises doing all kinds of stuff, you know, yeah. taking database from big Oracle systems. Yeah. But public sector, you know, certainly education we see in community colleges, all the way up to the premier institutions like the University of Maryland. Right. This is now a game changer, so how are you seeing that evolve in, in other universities? What are your peers doing? What's their mindset? Where are they on the progress bar using cloud, if you will, cloud native? Are they thinking microservices? Are they thinking about Kubernetes? Are they thinking about containers? Yeah. Where, where are they on the evolution? Yeah, it is a game changer, and it is because scalability and security are probably two themes that I would bring up. So regardless of the amount of data that you want to use as part of the analysis, there's no limit in terms of using AWS and, and performance. From a performance perspective, if we want to bring in a new data set, test it, see if there is correlation, see if it's useful in helping answer their key questions, we can do that. It also goes without saying the security. So we don't really have to do a lot of selling in terms of the, secure, the security of, of AWS because the, the, the level of uh, approvals and a level of certifications at AWS is far exceeds beyond what any university could get on their own or what any vendor individually could do on their own. So that's, that's a natural benefit that comes with a platform. Yeah, Brett, I wonder what other features or services uh, in AWS are important for what you build? Obviously, you know, scalability, security, kind of, kind, of, kind of a given when you talk about AWS. Yeah, the, the, the Redshift platform has been really useful to us. Uh, the way that we architect our model is that we use Tableau on the front end for BI, but also any user could have access at the database level and go into Redshift. Now we supply, supply security models so that only authorized users can get to that, so it's very helpful to have the security model on top of it. But the, the Redshift data structure really enables us to provide that experience at any level, depending on what the need is of each user. So not many functional users would be going to that level, but, but Redshift really enables us to have the technical users and the traditional SQL query writers and, and the ones that are doing the cross-seeding of the data to have access at that level. It's interesting you have a services model built in because it kind of makes sense, because one of the benefits of the cloud obviously is speed. Sure. You get performance, just raw performance, but also speed to value. Yeah. So you don't have to kind of do a lot of heavy lifting to kind of understand where the value points are. Yeah. So how has that changed the services piece? Because Amazon's constantly introducing new services. Right. How are you seeing that evolve? Because you, know, so you, you can do some heavy lifting. Okay, here's a data set. Is that the way the services are? How is the services changing with cloud? So, so our services model is really to hire individuals from universities that have the subject matter expertise. So we have ex-directors of institutional research, ex-admissions officers. So from our perspective, we want to leave the technical, the platform, the architecture, the security services to the experts in that realm. That's not what our universities are asking us for. They want to know how can you bring us subject matter expertise in the functional areas where we're struggling. We, don't, we want to not have to worry about the technical piece at all. So I think that's where, from a cloud perspective, we're able to rely on the expertise at AWS and Amazon, where, again, we're not having to worry about that. We can focus squarely on what the institution is. So you're more are. efficient. I think you so, yeah. You spend your time doing a lot of wrangling of tech, standing up anything, just pretty much turnkey on the cloud side. Yes. Focus on getting the users up and running yes. with the tools that you guys have. Exactly, and we've had instances where institutions have asked, so you know, we want to do this research project, we need additional space. We can turn that up instantly through the value of the services provided through Amazon, which if yeah. we were to do that on our own, it would be yeah. very expensive <laughs> and uh, a, a, a manual process. This is so. the better of the cloud, you can actually deliver services that values to, to the customer. So, okay, so I got to ask you questions. So now, sure. looking forward, where's the headroom? If you look at your business and how it's evolving, what's the headroom that you see coming down the road that you're going towards that you're going to bring to, to your customer base? Right, so with the evolving technologies that we all know, the buzzwords about AI and machine learning, sort of taking the data science to the next level. I think that's what eventually we'll be asked to do, is to look at, well, how can these be brought into education in a meaningful way? How can they provide us insight in ways that we're not doing today, again, more efficiently? Uh, we also value uh, time or accelerating time to value. So again, we, I think in the, uh, right now we're, we're moving data around and we're shifting data, and, and sometimes it can take a bit of time to do that. I think in the future we'll be able to turn up customers and start delivering that time to value in a much more accelerated way. 
All right, so Brett, you, you said you attended uh, some startup activity here at the show. Yes. I've also seen quite a few universities here, so sounds like you're learning to help build your business as well as, you know, from the customer standpoint. Why don't you give us a little bit of insight as to the value you get out of a show like this? Absolutely, so when universities attend, we have meetings and we get an understanding of where they are now, what kinds of questions do they have. That's really what we want to get to. Analytics is really nothing unless you understand what problem am I trying to solve. So being able to have those meaningful conversations you know, in this type of environment is very helpful to us to understand, again, where are you now, what is your vision for where you want to go, and how can we meet that uh, at their point of need. What's the low-hanging fruit for these universities use case-wise? What, what are they using you guys for the most? If you had to just look at the patterns. So it can be a range. So it can, it can be, I, I am not able to provide my stakeholders meaningful visualizations and insights and have them use data in a more meaningful way. So instead of giving you a table of you know, lines and numbers, I can give you something that's actually actionable. That, that's really where we start at the dashboard level. The more advanced institutions, you know, and everyone we work with has smart people on their teams, but they may have other projects. They may not have time. They may not have the ability to hire expensive data scientists. So from that perspective, on the advanced analytics side, you know, we can help with that advanced piece uh, yeah. with our services team. I mean, they can get up to speed faster. I mean, sometimes these projects can take months to stand it up. It is, it's the acceleration Personnel. that's huge. Great, what's the show vibe here? If you had to describe it for the folks that didn't make it. Yeah. What's, what's the show about this year in your mind? What's the, what's, the, what's the main big story here this year? Yeah, it's a lot like last year for me. It, it is understanding, you know, from, and I look at it from a data perspective, of course, and it really is all about um, new technologies and new vendors and, and, and how we can understand, again, how these technologies can not only make us more efficient and from a time perspective and cost perspective, but again, how can we more meaningfully answer the important questions that we have? All right, final question, because you're a start, startup kind of within a cool environment at the university which has got a lot of resources sure. and access to some real day use case data. Yep. What's the biggest thing you've learned over the past few years? You know, looking at the cloud, you're right in the middle of it, cloud native, super hot, there's people born in the cloud, right. people migrating in the cloud, all kind of different levels of cloudifying businesses, right. some pure play cloud. What is the things that you learned the most? Looking back and saying, okay, these are the top three things that we learned. So I've worked for, uh, for an institution as well as for a number of different vendors in the space and I think the, the theme that I see is, I want to go buy a technology. Oh, I heard I need predictive analytics. Oh, I heard that I need to have machine learning. Well, that's great that you know that, but do you, have you really refined what your challenge is and what you're trying to solve? And that goes for any technology, whether it's cloud or a, ser a new server or a new application really need to understand what is that core challenge. And that's where we always start. You know, like any good product manager, as we spoke about earlier, yeah. you got to start with what problem you're trying to solve and then apply your solution in a meaningful way. So I think that, awesome. that would be my answer for that. Brett, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for Thank sharing your story. Appreciate it. It was a pleasure. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Brett Dennis here, spin out from University of uh, Maryland. Great startup doing big data analysts. Obviously the cloud's perfect for that and obviously creating more value. It's the Cube bringing you the action here live in Washington, D.C. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.